Judge Lauren goes psycho on paternity court. What? How do you, what? I can hear called, you. No, it's called excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am? See, we're going to get it right in here today. I don't know who's teaching you, but I'm going to give you a lesson. I'm teaching them. Well, uh, well, you're not. Because when I, I say so, when I say something, the answer's not what. Whether they made a mistake or not, they have spoken from their heart or why they did. And you all arguing back and forth with one another instead of encouraging and empowering these young people. Oh, I bet I this can. This is about the most ignorant stuff I have seen in here in a long time. Oh, Sit down. Oh, Sit down. Oh, Miss Sism, you sit in that chair. Uh, Miss Sism, sit down. Mr. Jones and Miss Dolis have to be the funniest couple on the paternity court show. Their love story bounces from cheating to lying to deceiving. You just name it. From one charade to the next, these two find themselves in court, dragging each other for who is the better parent. Buckle up, people. You're about to be dumbfounded by this couple's drama. Miss Douglas, you are suing the father of your five children for a paternity test. You claim at times the defendant, Mr. Jones, doesn't treat your daughter, Cheyenne, as his own, and that he has always been suspicious that he's not her biological father. Getting down into the bits of this drama, right from the beginning of the case, Miss Dolis admitted to cheating on Mr. Jones. She apparently slept with his cousin. Now that's all shades of crazy, if you ask me. Here's the shocking thing. Mr. Jones was no saint. He was also cheating on her with her own cousin and one of his baby mamas. I would have lost my mind if I were the judge, honestly. Your Honor, I do, because I did make a mistake. I slept with this cousin and the condom had broke. But before that, Tyrone was downstairs sleeping with my cousin. He was still having sex with his baby's mom. He was doing him basically, but... Just like in the movies, Mr. Jones and Mrs. Douglas met at a party. Things got pretty freaky and interesting after that, and they ended up getting pretty intimate. Well, I saw that coming. Prepare to be wowed! After her cozy night with Mr. Jones, she met his cousin and voila, she went down on him too. How does that even happen? It got good. I met Tyrone actually at a party that happened downstairs in my building. I met him and his cousin almost the same night. Me and Tyrone got together the first night we watched movies. The next night we did have sex, but we weren't together. We were just, we just had sex. And after that, he went back to his. Things were starting to get heated up in the courtroom with both of them staring into each other's eyes like it was about to be a bloodbath. Boom, Miss Dolis gets pregnant. Ring, ring, ring. She hits up and tells Mr. Jones that it's his baby. Things seem pretty nice, right? Well, let's burst some bubbles. Yours. I wasn't too sure about it when she told me, but I'm like, okay, when she did tell me, I'm like, okay, I'll basically, I'm gonna step up and do what I gotta do. So you did try to support her through this? Yeah, I actually did. I'm looking at you, Ms. Douglas, you saying I didn't... She finally decides to open up two damn years later, telling Mr. Jones that she had a thing with his cousin. You could see the rage in his eyes, wondering where and how it all went down. Just like that, Good Baby Daddy starts to play the role of, I'm not sure this is my kid. I did tell you things were going to escalate. And the truth, though, two years after my daughter was two, I ended up telling him the truth. So you go in and you smell, you know the cologne, your cousin, you say, okay, I know my cousin was here, but she denied everything, everything, everything. How long did it take you to tell the truth? Two years after my daughter was two years old. Okay. Slowly, all hell starts to break loose. Miss Dolis spills the beans about Mr. Jones, telling the court how he wasn't there for her daughter and that he was taking care of his other kids with his baby mama. Yep, you had that right, other kids. It's already a whole mess at this point. Everyone's asking, who's really telling the truth? I go with his other's baby mama. We were together then and I'm pregnant with his son. He went to Chicago. We didn't hear from him for about four months. Didn't call check up on his daughter. Didn't call check up on the pregnancy or nothing. How I knew he was in Chicago with his baby mama was she texted my phone like, oh, you're looking for your man? He's with me. You wonder why he's not calling your daughter? Because he's... Emotions are flying here and there. Hold your seats for another bombshell, people. Trust me, your ears aren't ready for this. These couple have had other kids before their daughter and they aren't even married. Are these two a baby factory or what's going on with them? You, you are potentially together. Mm -hmm. This was your relationship ever committed? Was it ever an important thing to either one of you? Are we just making babies? Is it a baby fact? 
it's clear that these two had no trust for each other. Even after having more than one child together, they can't seem to bring themselves to trust each other. Why would they? I mean, after getting intimate with each other's cousins? That's beyond a far stretch. It's cheating. Yeah, I just had my twins seven months ago. He's still, he's still talking to women. I don't never talk to anybody first. After I find out he cheats on me, that's when I do it. But I really do want to be with him, and I want to make a family for my five kids. Now, Ms. Douglas, you just keep saying, OK, now, see, I do not. Everything went from a peaceful conversation to a bloodbath, with the couples throwing tantrums about who got intimate with whom and who couldn't be a good parent. Well, the moment of truth is finally here. Every single eye is placed on the judge as she's about to reveal the final verdict. Hold your breath. Mr. Jones, you are not fine. After a ton of accusations, denials, and drama, Miss Amos was taking Mr. Johnson to court over a paternity puzzle involving her two-month-old daughter. Hold on to your seats, folks, and get ready for some serious DNA drama. Open your case today because you are furious that the defendant acknowledges your older child, London, yet denies paternity of your two-month-old daughter, Paris, and does nothing for her. You claim he needs to step up once you prove that he is. Let's dive into the love saga. Or should I say, lack of it? Mr. Johnson allegedly does zilch for Paris, claiming she might not be his spawn. Furthermore, he spilled the tea on text messages from mystery guys, which then led to the moment she found out she had bun in the oven. Now what reaction accompanied that news, huh? I have my serious doubt that the baby's not mine. I done seen text messages in her phone from other guys saying, is you coming with me again tonight? I enjoyed myself. His name saved under a female name. So after swatting away the pregnancy bomb like a mosquito, the hurtful rejection echoed through the relationship. Ouch. It appears mommy had been fed up with daddy's playing with her. So she decided to give him a taste of his own medicine. No words for this stunt pulling. You know, he wasn't ever home. And I have had my doubts and suspicions and I have, you know, caught him doing stuff. So, you know, at the moment I'm hurt. So I'm doing, I'm doing these things, you know, out of emotions, you know? You playing the tit for tat game. He's doing it so I can do it too. And you are having sex with somebody else during the time when you're having sex with Mr. Now, Miss Amos landed smack dab in the middle of troubled waters. However, she managed to reach safety by claiming her tryst with the other dude was not during the wondrous time of conception. Now, the real question was whether this other possibility knew he might have a kid out here. Let's find out. Um, that I was pregnant. Um, of, of course, I was already having sex with him. We was already intimate or whatever. I had just recently, before I told him I was, before I found out I was pregnant, I was just recently, you know, messing with someone. And I ain't like I just been messing with this guy. So Dear Lord, Missy had all the time to play the revenge game. But when the time came to put on big girl pants, she ran from her responsibility. However, she brought along a witness to support her claim, which she did, but had an eye-opening revelation amidst the court proceeding too. Absolutely, she looks just like his other two kids. So you have no doubt. That's just me. I mean, the information that she gave today, that was new to me. So of course, I will have a doubt, but... You know what I'm saying? She looks just... Enter the next supporting cast, Miss Johnson, big sister of the defendant. And she had her version of the truth. By the looks of it, baby mama had told her something else entirely. In the heat of the moment, though. We're in for a courtroom showdown of epic proportions. Antoinette Johnson. Hi, Miss Johnson. What is your relationship to the defendant? This is my little brother. Your brother testified that you witnessed Miss Amos with other guys. I did. You don't, she, she don't and, know who I know. And not only that, she told me our own mouth, this is not your brother's... We're in for a courtroom showdown of epic proportions, people. Up till now, only one kid's paternity was under question. However, Miss Johnson claimed she suspected the oldest kid's paternity as well. Lauren Lake had her work cut out for her. So she went cracking. And boy, did she get to the bottom of the truth. Prepare to be speechless, people. Reason to doubt? 
She don't <clears throat> she don't have any reason to doubt that um London is 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 his child. She she never cared for me. Miss Amos, you know, I study a lot of body language in this court. Moving on from that heartbreaking revelation. It was only fair we get to the nitty-gritty of Mommy's relationship with the other guy now. Since their cozy equation had been going on for quite a long time. Man, Miss Amos was full of surprises. It quite often? Pretty, it was pretty much a relationship. It was pretty much a relationship? Yes. That you were having outside of the relationship you had with Mr. Johnson? Yes, I've been actually knowing. About time we draw the curtain on this paternity showdown. Will it be a double dose of daddy drama or will the clouds of uncertainty finally clear? The key to the truth was in the envelope. Here goes nothing. Mr. Johnson, you are the father. Woo! This almost felt like betrayal on Mr. Patterson's path. After taking care of the baby and making sure he was present every day of the kid's life, Miss Knight wakes up one morning and says, he isn't the father. We're about to dive into a tale of delusion. Grab your pie and enjoy the ride. Patterson, you opened your case today to prove that you are four-year-old Demarcus Patterson Jr.'s biological father. You named him and have cared for your junior since birth and are furious. The defendant now claims another man is his. We are about to enter the domain of questionable romance where these guys' relationship wasn't exactly a fairy tale. A saga involving two men, a lady, and a four-year-old boy. Defy, you've been there since day one. Please explain. I've been there since birth, you know, since he came out the womb, since he entered his world. When the doctor first, you know, held him up and finally gave him to him, I witnessed him just completely quit crying and looked me dead in my eyes. And that's when, at that moment, I knew I became someone's father. So at that moment, like all the doubts that we had before, I just knew like they were just out the window. Well, the doubts and reservations were running pretty deep over here. But no worries because baby daddy went on a long rant explaining why he had his doubts. And boy, did he bag some solid points. When? That day that she left, I ain't hear from her for a month or two. So wait, she you're just... saying she just left the house and you didn't hear from her for a month or two? Yeah, I was supposed to pick up from work, but my grandma made me feel worse about it because she was like, she knew she was too fast for me anyways, but. And... Things started to take a different turn as the truth started to unfold. Ms. Knight was not a faithful partner. The tension started to fill the courtroom, and even Judge Lauren was amazed by the things she heard. Yup, they were crazy. When you left, you ended up with Mr. Siegler. Right. Which is the other possible father. Right. We ended up having protective sex that night, and then we ran out of condoms, and while we were doing it, I told him to go ahead and get me pregnant. That's what I told him. And if Ms. Knight finds out she's pregnant, well, that's not surprising. Accusations start flying about the courtroom like it's a competition. They go on making a fuss about what to name the baby. It turns into a whole charade and no one can make any sense of what's going on. The question I keep asking is how they even became a couple? Demarcus was there. He was there when my water broke. We woke him up, said, baby, my water broke. Time to go to the hospital. He hopped up. All right, let's do this. So we was in the hospital that whole day, had the baby. He didn't get to cut the umbilical cord because the doctor took it upon himself to cut it. Yeah, he did. But do that. that was it. When he had the baby, Demarcus looked over, said, That's my baby. We named we ain't naming him no Christian. We naming him Demarcus. There's a whole lot of craziness going on right now. As things Judge Lauren starts to dig a little deeper, she starts to find out the most shocking things. And when I say shocking, trust me, your jaws are gonna drop. Oh, so you all were open about this? Yes, we were always open. He, we would take rides to the gas station. He'd show me pictures of Ladarius. Like, you show this like that? You show this like that? I ain't gonna lie. First and we were like, open about up. it. All very open about it. I started seeing his ears slant out, and I was like, hold up, you know? Just like, I don't... Their stories stopped to make sense and add up. It sounded like it was being made up, and Judge Lauren just wasn't having it anymore. She asks the other man in the picture to step into the courtroom, and my God, did he have a lot to say. Father. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. You do? Yes, Your Honor. Why do you believe that? All right, in the midst of me and Kaylin 
having dealings or intimacy. I, I was the one who told her she was pregnant. Oh. And when I told her she was pregnant, she say, well, if you feel like that, take me. Now this is where it all gets really messed up. When I say messed up, I mean really, really messed up. The four-year-old boy calls both men daddy. How does a kid call two different men daddy? This really is a baby daddy war. It's all of your mess. Yeah. Thank you. Because if you're not the father, this four-year-old young boy has your name. And if you are the father, he's still calling Mr. Sigler daddy, too. Hold your breath now, because the DNA test results were ready to be revealed. The tension was escalating, emotions running high, and the truth was about to hit like a plot twist. Who's the real baby daddy? Let's see. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Sigler. <gasps> You are DJ's biological father, Mr. C. Mr. Byram had no idea he was signing up for a lifetime of drama when he hooked up with Miss Morris. And my God, was their relationship more chaotic than a Mexican cartel. I hope you guys are ready for this baby daddy drama because it's going to leave you speechless. Trust me. Kids together, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Byram, you say the plaintiff admitted to sleeping with another man, and when the results prove you are not Jackson's father, you plan to leave for good. Yes, I do. All right, so Mr. Byram, there's a lot at stake today, am I yes, correct? Yes, our whole relationship is based on- Face could tell you that he had been through the thicks and turns of a disloyal relationship. He didn't want to be part of that anymore. What was worse? He wasn't even sure if he was the father of their child. Believe me when I tell you, it was a hustle with these two. Now, Mr. Byram, playing the this time that she's cheated on me. This is the second time, and I've been nothing but faithful and loving to her since day one. Second time, it happened once. Ms. Morris, did you cheat on him? Detective Roll had a funny feeling in his gut that his girlfriend had been messing around. He was hell-bent on proving it, so all his senses were alert, like he was Spider-Man throughout their relationship. What he uncovered would leave you speechless. The window. And then, uh, that's when I started banging on the doors and the windows. And then I go in the house. He's hiding up in the attic of her grandma's house. Hiding in the attic? Yes, ma'am. Hiding in the attic, up in her grandma's house. I told him, you gotta... I mean, he found out that his girlfriend had been cheating on him with one of his close friends. Hold up! The juice from this story doesn't just end there. When Miss Morris is asked if she did cheat, she doesn't deny it. I mean, was she excited that she did? We were having trouble way before I even slept with his friend. I was always constantly getting accused. He's always constantly telling me I'm cheating. It's been happening for four years now. And so what I'm trying to understand we, is he keeps accusing you, so you just go ahead and validate. Oh, trust me, Mr. Byram was beyond pissed. He found out that his girlfriend didn't just cheat on him once with his friend. Apparently, they were in a relationship. Now that's really messed up. How do you even do such a thing? It's really unbelievable. They got together. When me and him split up for that month. No, yeah. they were together from like July all the way until November. We this were, isn't just a month I'm, thing. This I'm was saying like a we were in a thing. potential and relationship. Then you, and then you all, month. after all of this, you yeah. got back. Things start to spiral out of control as more mysteries behind their damaged relationship start to show themselves. Mr. Byram has been trying to bond with his kid, but it's not just working for him. Whenever he looks at the kid, all he sees is his friend's face. Ouch! That must be upsetting. Still buy him clothes and toys and do whatever for him, but I just, I keep my distance from him because I don't know if he's my son. And then sometimes he'll say it's his son, sometimes he'll act like a dad to him, and then sometimes he won't. So it's like a, a mood swing type of thing. like. The whole drama from these two gives you a lot of adrenaline rush. Miss Morris eventually admits that what she did was completely wrong and hopefully they could work things out and be happy again. But is that what Mr. Byram wants? I very much doubt that. Be with him. I do not want to be with the other guy. He constantly tells me I do and I don't. 
and I'm ready to basically move on with our family. I understand the mistakes that I made. I at least admitted to it. I came out and said what I did, but I'm willing to become a family. We already are. Well, there's no going back now. The situation is just very messed up, but the truth is about to be unleashed. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. Will they be able to save their relationship or is this goodbye? The answers lie in front of the judge. Mr. Byron, you are the father. Yes. We have a second timer here. Mr. Scott was previously questioning another woman and now we had another one. However, Miss Kalon appeared chill and had a tale of vanishing acts and online romance. Get ready for a paternity bombshell that'll leave you questioning if this is real life or just another episode of Who's Your Daddy? Now, you previously appeared in this court and it was determined that you now have seven children by yes. four women. Yes, sure. Uh, you're here today uh, denying you fathered the defendant, Miss Kalan's four-month-old daughter, Ezra, yes, and today's paternity results will clear. So, in the world of digital romance, their love story blossomed like a bad Tinder date. They met online, chatted for three weeks to a month. Who's counting, right? And things got super cozy. But beware, this isn't your typical lovey-dovey narrative. Nope, it's a saga of suspicious phone snooping and trust issues that could make even Romeo and Juliet cringe. Met online, we chatted for about three weeks, I'll say three weeks three to a weeks. month. Something like that, you know? So she came to visit me. She came to my city, she came to visit me. You know, we hung out, we spent time, had a nice time that night. No big deal, you know? It was nice, it was nice. She went to sleep. As Miss Kalon spills the tea, she unveils Mr. Scott's sudden disappearance, suspecting another woman in the shadows. Mr. Scott's accusations lead to doubts, and the court becomes a stage for hurt feelings, trust issues, and a dash of online espionage. The drama unfolds as they question the foundation of their relationship. No, not at that time. No, yeah, well, at the time of she, um, upon of her arrival. No, see that's upon why he's arrival, stuttering because he's lying. No, who am I married upon to? Her who am arrival, I upon her arrival, upon her arrival, we was together. I didn't upon have her nothing arrival, to hide. We I didn't together. need to hide nothing. But then she also admitted to me Come like she's. Oh boy, Mr. Scott seemed to be ready to give all the facts and more. But the plot thickens when Miss Kalon reveals him to be a big fat liar. It's an insane tale of revelations, motel mysteries, and intimate details all leading to the pregnancy. He is a lie. I think he believes his own lies, for real. <laughs> I mean, this is like crazy. I don't have to lie. So I don't how, know where how he's did it go this. down for you? Okay, so I met him on uh, the internet site, a dating site. I didn't pursue him, he pursued me. Things were heating up, and they were about to heat some more. It seemed these guys had issues with each other for not picking up the phone when the other called. Oh, this seems like a messy web. And we all are left wondering, who's fooling whom? He, he, if, if I call you at 12 o'clock at himself. night, if I call you at 12 o'clock at night, not once, not twice, not three, not four, and you don't answer the phone? The plaintiff, the self-proclaimed smart man, delves into the evidence he found in the mommy's phone. By the looks of it, a few questionable pictures were enough for him to doubt the woman big time. Hey, I went through her phone. Uh -huh. There was we pictures of other men's male parts. Okay? For real? Pictures of other male parts. And it was another, she was like, well, I'm finna go to Lancaster to visit a friend, a family member. And she did it like that? Pictures of male and then, people. Moving on, mommy claimed to have never been in love with the guy. However, it appears these guys did share a few mutual qualities that ended up attracting them. Though safe to say, it was a rocky relationship with doubts about commitment. Oh, they both did not trust one another. I love on, on the internet site that I met him on, he um, wanted basically the same things I was looking for, you know? Um, he yes, was family, course. he said he was family oriented. Of course I am, I take care of all my kids, but. Well, Mr. Scott seemed to be thrilled by the news first. Or so Miss Kalon says. Dreams of a happy family were shared and everything. However, it all went down the drain when the baby came into the world. All hell breaks loose then. 
did. Uh, quote I, unquote. Oh, mommy, we're gonna be a family. See, yeah, that was a nickname. And did you want to be a family with him? I mean, it was what it was. I wasn't sure if that's what I what wanted. Was he it? wanted me to move to. Wait, Lent. you said it was what it was. What I was mean, it? next up. Ms. Kalon was countersuing the plaintiff for childcare expenses and loan payments as well. Yep, the guy was in debt. Though he didn't believe that himself. He was quick to shut that down. Altogether, maybe four or five hundred. <laughs> okay. The money she sent you, was it a loan? No, 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 yes, no. It wasn't loan. No, it wasn't no loan. Why did I get a loan from her? I mean, I worked You act time. like I'm speaking blasphemy. I just no, asked, was it a loan? loan. Yeah. No, it was not a loan. Not okay, at all. what was it? I said I needed it, and she and gave what, it what, to what, me. What, 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 the courtroom was buzzing with anticipation. And these guys seemed to be only good at one thing, bickering with each other. The judge, sensing potential future drama, wrapped up the case and went straight for the results. Mr. Scott. You are not the father. 